Welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Choosing Beggar Reddit video. In our first story, my ex-classmate jokingly tries to cash in a bet and fails. Let's jump right in. This is kind of a complicated interaction and needs a bit of backstory, but stay with me. Obligatory not on mobile and English is my first language, so roast me. I met this guy, let's call him Kevin, in an undergrad class during my final year, so 2010-2011. We interacted some during the class and were both active participants and wound up Facebook friends. He was a nice enough guy, but we never hung out outside of class or talked pretty much at all since we finished the course. Looking back at our Facebook chat, he messaged me once in 2012 out of the blue discussing a diagnosis he got. I was in medical school, but that was about it. We followed each other on Instagram as well, but again, very little interaction. I don't know anything about this guy's life currently. Apparently, in 2017, we had a conversation under an Instagram photo he posted. I have no idea why I took the bait but I'm pretty confrontational, so whatever. Maybe I was having a weird day. Here is the confrontation. Note, I didn't remember this conversation took place, seeing as it was four years ago, but he sent it to jog my memory during the conversation where I noted it. Today's conversation was sparked by posting a heavily pregnant mirror selfie on Facebook yesterday, and he commented asking me what phone I had. I replied, a Pixel 2. An innocent enough question, whatever. This interaction took place today on Facebook chat and it was just so wild I wanted to post about it. Also, I'm on maternity leave and had nothing better to do. Insert a little bit of small talk about my pregnancy and COVID here. Kevin said, so you have a Pixel 2, how's life without a headphone jack? Haha, <laughs> didn't have much of a choice, did I? No phones have one anymore. Also, I never plug in headphones, so it hasn't been that big of an issue, lol. As you may recall, you were pretty adamant that you would never get a phone without a headphone jack, and I was pretty confident you would cave and get one. Who turned out to be right, Dr. Bezia? I mean, I didn't really have a choice, so you ended up right by default, sir. Now, Dr. Bezia, you most certainly did have a choice. Three years ago, the Samsung Galaxy still had a headphone jack, and there are still Android phones with it today. But that is neither here nor there. We had a bet and you lost. Yes, but I didn't want a fire hazard on my hands. They weren't allowed on planes, which pre-COVID were a staple in my life. <laughs> Excuses. Okay, sure, sure. So you owe me $100,000. I'm flexible, I'll take check or Venmo, whatever works better for you. <laughs> Gonna have to say I don't remember this bet and will not be fulfilling it. Sorry, mate. At this point, he sends me these screenshots from Instagram. Android users be like, in 2016, iPhone 7. No headphone jack. How can Apple get rid of the headphone jack? Apple is so controlling and restrictive. Apple users are sheep, blindly paying ridiculous prices for anything with a shiny logo, no matter how much Apple screws them. 2017, Pixel 2, no headphone jack. Bah, bah, take my money. 2019, Galaxy S10, no headphone jack. Bah, bah, take my money. I'll bet you 100,000 I won't. Dr. Beja, deal. Definitely not. Dr. Beja, but you are going to eventually buy an Android phone without a headphone jack, just like a little sheep. Hashtag ba ba. I wouldn't. Also, you're an Apple fanboy and you're talking about sheep? Mate. Dr. Beja, Android users are the real sheep. I just sent you the photos. Uh huh, of something I typed on Instagram four years ago. A bet is a bet. Not exactly a binding contract. Also, I think I received the phone as a gift from my brother, so I don't think I even had a say in it. Sorry, mate. Technically, I didn't buy it. Winning on a technicality, hashtag lawyered. Oh, come now, Dr. Beja. You caved like I knew you would. Nope, I said I would never buy one, and I haven't. Stuck true to my word. Sorry, mate. Rules are rules. You still have an iPhone? I get it that this is all in jest, but it was getting to be an awkward conversation. I thought it would end here. 
but you will eventually have to buy one without a headphone jack. Yes, I still have an iPhone. I don't plan on getting a new phone, but now I would buy one because I realized how inconsequential it is, seeing as I never used a headphone jack anyway. People are allowed to change their minds with new information, but your acha moment did fall short, seeing as I still have not bought a phone without a headphone jack to date. Just take the L, mate. Okay, but again, I knew you would cave and be an android sheep because this always happens with all you Android fanboys. I was right, Baba. Um, okay, I guess. Uh, whatever you want to think. Have a good one. Oh, come now, Dr. Beja. Don't be a sore loser. I'm not a sore loser. I haven't purchased a phone without a headphone jack. So again, your gotcha moment didn't work out. And again, I'm an adult who won't be held hostage by something I posted on Instagram four years ago knowing now that I don't need a headphone jack. My next phone will inevitably not have one. It will not be a momentous occasion for me. You're just taking a joke a bit far, mate. Okay, but then when you do upgrade and get a phone that doesn't have a headphone, I would expect you to honor our bet. Maybe a little, but honestly, I'm not expecting you to pay me $100,000. I'm not insane, lol. Um, absolutely not. Did you just message me expecting me to give you money? No, I didn't. Okay, well, it's been fun catching up. I genuinely wanted to know how you were doing, especially considering you're going to be a mother. Also, I bet you 100,000, with nothing implied in terms of currency or denomination. So sure, here, I'll send you 100,000 air molecules. Hope they make it to you. This has been an extremely weird interaction. Have a good one. Wishing you the best. Oh, come on. I'm totally pulling your leg. You just don't get my sense of humor. I'm not insane. I seriously don't expect you to give me 100000 for something we talked about on Instagram years ago. I don't know. Maybe buy me a beer or something. Yeah, that's enough weird interactions for the day. Note, please don't start an Android versus Apple thing. I don't care. I just want all the corporations to pay taxes and stop building planned obsolescence into their products. Story number two, Choosing Beggar wants to live with me for free and chuck out the other person so they can have two bedrooms. So I, a 34 year old female, live in a small three bedroom house with my mom. I have some health problems and my mom couldn't afford to live by herself so it works for the two of us. I have the large bedroom as I spend a lot of time in there due to my health and my mom has one of the box rooms. The other room is another box room and at the time it just had a bed and wardrobe. My sister had been suffering with mental health problems for a long time. She couldn't work and was going to become homeless. She demanded that she move in with me completely rent free and because she couldn't stand to live in just a tiny box room. Our mom would have to move out and live with her boyfriend, who she didn't want to live with. My family has always given in to this sister's every demand. However, I have never given in to her unreasonable demands. At this point, my mom was willing to move in with her boyfriend. I told my sister that if she needed to move into my house for support, then she absolutely could, but I could not afford to cover all the bills and mortgage for more than a month so she would either have to pay 50% of expenses or our mom would continue to live there. Side note, I hated living with my sister growing up. She was filthy, never cleaned up after herself, and played loud music until the early hours. So me agreeing for her to live with us at all was actually huge for me. My sister had a massive go at me, saying I only cared about money and I was a terrible person. She tried to get my mom to convince me to let her move in rent free for as long as she wanted. I did not give in. My sister then cut me out of her life for the best part of a year, blocked me on all social media and phone apps. Having this break from her made me realize how much stress she was adding to my life and now I have no relationship with her anymore, but it is my choice. I added this to add, my sister has had treatment for her mental health multiple times. It was more a case of long-term management of mental health condition, rather than one that was undiagnosed with no support or treatment. In the end, 
my sister didn't become homeless. She actually had many options available to her, but none of them met her tough standards. This is John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to be the first to know when the next one drops, then subscribe and make sure you click on the notifications bell so that you actually get my videos. We'd love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.